What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Summer is almost here, and for me, that means offshore structure fishing for bass. To find offshore structure, I use a contour map. In this video, I want to explain how to identify every single type of offshore structure that you need to catch bass this summer. Let's get into it. I'm going to start by explaining how to interpret a contour line map. If you look at this map here, the blue area is the water, and the yellow area is the shoreline or land. Within the blue area, you'll see a series of lines. Each of these lines corresponds to a specific depth of water on the bottom of the lake. For example, if we take a look at this line here, it has a small number 7 on top of that line. That 7 means that it is 7 feet deep wherever that line is touching on the map. Therefore, every single line on a contour map corresponds to a specific depth of water. We'll use these lines to determine the slope of the lake's bottom. For example, if we take a look at this area here, you can see the lines are spread apart by a decent amount of space, maybe a quarter inch between each line. When lines are spread apart in this way, it means the bottom has a very gentle slope to it. The depth is getting deeper gradually over a long distance. On the other hand, we have an area where the lines are grouped tight together, you can barely see any space between these lines. When lines in a contour map are tight together, this indicates a steep slope, or where an area goes from shallower to deeper water very quickly. Finally, we have an area on the contour map that has no lines. This indicates that there is no slope to the bottom of the lake, or that it is completely flat. Whenever you see an area without contour lines, it means the depth is not changing, and the depth is going to correspond with the closest contour line around that area. If we take a look at this map at a higher level, you can see the areas where you have no contour lines, tight contour lines, and where the lines are spread apart. Using Google Earth, we can look at this lake when it is 8 to 9 feet low. We can then compare the Google Earth image of what's actually on the bottom of the lake to what we see on the contour line map. In the area where there are no lines on the contour map, you can see the actual bottom of the lake is flat with no depth change. Where the lines were tight together on the contour map, you can see a drastic change from no water to water on the Google Earth image. This is that sharp drop off from shallower to deeper water. Finally, you can see the area where the lines were spread apart. Here there is no drastic depth change, though we can tell that the water is gradually getting deeper over a long distance. Hopefully we're now on the same page about how to interpret a contour map. Next, I want to share the different types of structures we can identify on a contour map that will hold bass. There are different types of structure depending on the type of lake you're fishing. The two major types of lakes are man-made reservoirs and natural lakes. Therefore, I'm going to show you what each type of structure looks like on both of these lake types, just in case you don't have one of these lake types in your area of the country. Number one, points. Let's start by talking about the most common type of structure on any lake, a point. We'll start by taking a look at examples on reservoirs. If we shade the point on this contour map, you can see that it's an area of shallower water that's connected to the bank but sticks out far into the middle of the lake. By switching to Google Earth and taking the lake down 9 to 10 feet, you can clearly see what this point looks like underwater. It is a long, flat section of water that is surrounded by deeper water on three sides. Finally, on one side, you're actually going to have the land, which is where the point originates from. Bass are going to set up on top of the point in the shallower water to feed on bait fish and other forage. If we look at Google Earth, we can see that these bass are positioned out in open water. However, they're not in deep water because that point extends out in the middle of the lake. If we then take the lake down, you can see those fish are setting up in that shallower water area that's surrounded by deeper water. This is considered an offshore area because you're not fishing up against the bank, but instead fishing in shallower water out in the middle of the lake. Here's another example of a series of points on a man-made reservoir. There are different types of points that you'll encounter on a contour map. For example, here are two rounded points and two steep points. Rounded points are areas where you have flatter, shallower water over a large area. A steeper point is where you have a very narrow strip of shallow water that will stick out into the middle of the lake. Changing to Google Earth, then taking the lake down 6 to 7 feet, we can see what these steep and rounded points look like underwater. Both types of points can hold fish in different seasons of the year. You'll have to fish both to determine which one is the most productive on your fishing day. Finally, let's take a look at a point on a natural lake. 
Natural lakes are found up north and down in Florida. In this case, we have a gradual rounded point that sticks off from the shoreline. In many cases, you're going to have some form of aquatic vegetation growing on top of this point. This might be milfoil, hydrilla, or other types of submerging grass. Bass will usually set up where there are holes in the grass on top of these points, because this is where bluegill and perch will spawn during the summer and the early fall. Number two, humps or high spots. Humps and high spots are another common structure that are found on most lakes across the country. Let's start by taking a look at humps on reservoirs. I highlighted the hump here in red. A hump is a shallower water area that's surrounded on all sides by deeper water. Changing Google Earth and then taking the lake down 10 feet, we can see that the hump is basically like an underwater island where you have shallower water surrounded by deeper water. Bass will set up on the sides and the tops of humps. Here's what it looks like on a contour map. Changing Google Earth, we can see that these humps are out in the middle of the lake and they're very hard to find unless you use a contour map because they're not connected to the shore. Finally, if we take the lake down, you can see that this is where the bass will set up underwater. High spots are similar to humps with one small exception. Here is a high spot highlighted on a contour map. Unlike humps, which have a drastic depth change on all sides, high spots have a very small depth change and they only rise off the bottom one to two feet above the surrounding area. If we change to Google Earth, then take the lake down 8 to 10 feet, you can see the high spot is only slightly shallower than the surrounding area. This is usually a hard bottom area and it will attract shad and other bait fish. This in turn attracts bass. Therefore, if you can find a high spot on a piece of structure, this is usually going to be the sweet spot where the majority of the bass will set up, even if the surrounding area looks relatively similar. Let's also take a look at these structures on natural lakes. Here are two humps in the middle of the lake. These often have rock piles or harder bottom areas that attract bass in the fall and the winter time on natural lakes. Here are several high spots on another natural lake. These high spots are very subtle and very difficult to find if you're not looking for them. The reason these high spots are effective is because usually these types of areas are full of offshore grass. Within all of this grass, you're going to have these high spots, which have harder bottom areas. This attracts bait fish, like bluegill and perch, and it also creates holes in the grass the bass will use to ambush different types of forage. If you can find these high spots in a big grass flat, you're going to find the bass. Really quick, if you're still looking for help finding spots on your home lake, head to our website, fishthemoment.com. On our website, we offer lake breakdowns that provide 40 GPS waypoints that you can download straight to your fish finder. These breakdowns include detailed area descriptions, a summary of the lake, and an instructional guide on how to transfer the waypoints from your computer to your fish finder. We offer breakdowns by season, and we have lakes all across the country. These waypoints are picked out by professional angler Randy Blockett. If we don't have your lake, we also offer personalized lake breakdowns that we update every single Monday on the website. Definitely check them out on fishthemoment.com. Number three, ditches or drains. The next type of structure we're going to cover is referred to by two different names. The first is ditches and the second is drains. Both of these names mean the exact same thing and refer to the same type of structure. Here are two ditches highlighted on a contour line map. A ditch is an area of deeper water that cuts in to a shallower flat area. Changing to Google Earth, then taking the lake down 8 to 10 feet, you can clearly see these ditches. The land is the flatter water area that is an 8 to 10 feet of water out in the middle of the lake. The ditch is an area of 10 to 20 feet of water that cuts into the shallow flat. Bass use these ditches as migration routes in and out of the flats. You never know exactly where the bass are going to be set up on these ditches, but if you use your electronics or fish any grass on the edge of these ditches, you'll often find large groups of bass. Here's another example of ditches or drains on a reservoir. Here are the ditches highlighted on a contour map. Again, by switching to Google Earth and then taking the lake down 8 to 10 feet, you can clearly see these ditches cutting into the shallow flat. These are great areas in any season of the year, so you should definitely be on the lookout for them if you have them on your lake. You can also find ditches on natural lakes, though they're not going to be as obvious as the ones I showed earlier. 
Here are two ditches that cut into a shallow flat. This flat is likely covered in submerged vegetation, like hydrilla and milfoil. These ditches provide deeper water access for these bass in the middle of these flats. This often creates holes in the grass or makes the grass a little bit shorter in those areas, making it easier for bass to ambush bait fish like bluegill and perch. Number four, shoals or ridges. The next type of structure also goes by two different names, shoals or ridges. Here is a shoal or ridge highlighted on a contour line map. Shoals are an area of shallow water that sticks far out into the middle of a lake. They're similar to points, except for they extend two to three times further, creating areas of shallow water way out in the middle of open water in the middle of the lake. Changing to Google Earth, then taking the lake down five to six feet, we can see this shoal sticking out into the middle of the lake. Bass will often set up on top of these shoals, chasing bait fish like shad and herring. When they're not feeding, they'll move a little bit deeper into the ditches and drains on both sides of the shoals. Here's another example of a ridge or a shoal on a contour line map. By switching Google Earth, then taking the lake down four to five feet, we can clearly see this ridge sticking out from the bank. My favorite types of ridges and shoals to find are those that are not obvious when you look at the shoreline. In this case, the shoreline is relatively straight. However, there is a large shoal that sticks out from that bank and you would never know it was there unless you use a contour map. Shoals and ridges are also very common on natural lakes, especially the Great Lakes up north. These shoals are much larger than the ones you'll find on reservoirs, though they hold just as many fish, if not more. Number five, creek channel or river channel. The next type of structure is unique to reservoirs and is not found in natural lakes. Here is a creek channel highlighted on a contour line map. If we change to Google Earth, then take the lake down 10 to 15 feet, we can clearly see the creek channel running through the middle of the lake. This is the old creek or riverbed that ran through this lake before it was flooded or dammed up by the dam on the lower end of the lake. You'll find creek channels on almost every single reservoir across the country. However, you won't find them on natural lakes. In addition, I rarely fish the center of creek channels for bass. Instead, I fish the different types of structures that are created as a result of creek channels existing in a lake. Number six, channel swing or bluff wall. A channel swing is created when a creek channel runs very close to the shoreline. The closer the creek channel gets, the steeper the bank, and the steepest banks are called bluff walls. If we change Google Earth, then take the lake down four to five feet, we can see the creek channel running very close to the shoreline. This creates a steeper bank with chunk rock that holds a lot of bass in the pre-spawn and the post-spawn. Here's another example of a channel swing on a contour line map. The creek channel is highlighted in red. Wherever that creek channel swings close to the shoreline, it creates a channel swing. In this example, it runs close to two points, creating two channel swing points. If you hear channel swing point, channel swing hump, it just basically means that a creek channel is swinging very close to another type of structure, like a point, a hump, or anything else. Number seven, ledge or drop. The last type of structure we're going to talk about are ledges or drops. A ledge is created by two different types of structure combined. The first is a flat. Here is a flat highlighted on a contour line map. It's an area of water where the depth changes very gradually over a long distance, creating pretty much a flat area out in the middle of the lake. The other element is a creek channel, which I've highlighted here in red. Whenever a creek channel runs very close to the edge of a flat, it forms a ledge. The ledge is the place where the creek channel and the flat meet. By changing to Google Earth, then taking the lake down seven to eight feet, we can clearly see the flat, the creek channel, and the ledge. This is what all ledges look like underwater, and they are great places to catch bass in all seasons of the year. In general, bass aren't actually going to set up on the ledge itself. Instead, they're actually going to be 10 to 15 feet up on top of the flat when they're feeding. However, when they're inactive, they may suspend over the top of the ledge or even in the creek channel. Here's another example of a ledge on a contour map. In this case, we have all three elements, the flat highlighted in yellow, the creek channel highlighted in red, and then the ledge 
where the flat and the creek channel meet. In this case, the creek channel forks and actually creates a ditch that goes into the middle of the flat. As a result, there's actually two points that are formed, which are called points in the ledge. If we switch to Google Earth, then take the lake down eight to 10 feet, we can see the flat, the creek channel, the ditch, and the points in the ledge. Whenever you have an irregularity along the edge of a flat, like these points, it's going to attract bass. And I always look for these irregularities when I'm fishing offshore, especially in the summertime. You can also find ledges on natural lakes. However, they're not formed by a creek channel. Instead, it's where a flat drops off sharply into deeper water. In this case, you'll often have grass up on top of the flat, and then where the drop-off happens will be the end of the grass, creating an outside grass line. This is a great place to find bass in the late summertime on natural lakes. So definitely look for this if you're fishing these type of waters. And that's it for this video. Hopefully it cleared up some confusions for you about how to interpret a contour line map and how to find different types of structure to fish offshore. If you enjoyed the video, I really appreciate it if you left a like down below and also subscribed to the Fish the Moment YouTube channel. We are extremely close to 100,000 subscribers and we really appreciate your support. Thanks again for checking out the video and we'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.